welcome to day one of um, this market, uh, should I call it a seminar now, or let me call it a teaching or a class. Okay, my name is Ajibola Juro Jayola Philip. Popularly people call me ADP. It's just an abbreviation of my name. Just put the A, the D, and the P. Ajibola Juro Jayola Philip, ADP. So I prefer the ADP anyways. All right, um, today we'll be talking about marketing. We'll be talking about marketing. And let me say this, why do you need to listen to me? I have sold so many things from offline to online. You know, there was a time I was selling ice cream <laughs> to students. At the time I sold so many, I sold so many products. Um, I've been to network marketing. I've been a consultant to some um, online platform that have to make sales. So you need to listen to me when I talk to you about marketing, all right? Um, tomorrow, Solomon will be coming in to take you some practical session and things you need to do to further enhance your marketing skills online or offline, all right? Um, let us start like this. I have over 5,000 contacts on my phone. And all these people, I used to check their status. I upset something on WhatsApp now. Hardly do I have a friend that is not selling something. You know, I'm somehow disturbed. Like everyone is selling something. So, <laughs> so it won't shock you. Over, I have over 20 people on my WhatsApp that is selling here alone. You might hear Brazil, I don't know what they call it. Now, the market is becoming competitive every blessed day. There's nothing you are doing. The, the guys are loading iTunes cards, they are buying Bitcoin. The ladies are selling wigs, they are selling bags, they are selling shoes, and wears. So that's what we have on WhatsApp now. Everywhere you turn to, someone is selling something. Now, you want to stand out. You want to reach customers. How do you do that? Marketing becomes a necessity for you. It's not something you say, see, who go by, go by. No, we are, we are past that stage. This is a stage now where you have to nurture your customers, where you nourish them, where you even appeal to them to buy. Because everyone, the one person you want to sell to is selling something. So how do you get them? How do you put them together? How do you run ads that convert? How do you reach your potential customer in what you are selling? That is why we are here. So I'm going to be educating you on how to do that and how to make your customer your ambassador without paying them. That is why you are here. It's very, very important. Listen to me again. Everyone is selling. You need to stand out. And remember, remember that um, the only place where money comes in is when you make sales. The only place where money comes in is where you make sales. Other units are taking away money from you. If you buy products, your money is going out. You produce anything, your money is going out. Only sales. And how do you make sales? And that is why we are here. So I will be starting with fundamental of marketing. The fundamental issue in marketing. I will go back to our secondary school and I will be defining market. What is a market? I, will, I don't like, I won't go to all those textbooks definition. As I tell you, market is this, that. No, market is people. That is my definition. And it's as simple as that. Anywhere you see people, that is market. Online, offline, anywhere you see people, it is market. In your church, in your mosque, um, in your place of work, um, anywhere. Once we have people around that place, it's a market. Anywhere you see people, that is market. So people are your potential market. People are your potential market. So your focus in marketing is people. Not things, not what you are selling, not how beautiful uh, your product look like. Your attention, your focus are the people you are selling to. So when you see people, that is your market, wherever you see people. Now, in fundamental of marketing, there's something we call psychology of marketing. Now, when we talk about psychology of marketing, 
is the ability to define your market properly, which so many people are not doing. A friend of mine contacted me um, some days ago and he said, she is selling data. I was happy. Oh, good. She then I said, I should buy from her. I asked her some questions. I can't buy from you because you are my friend. I don't see, you know, I saw so many things online. Support your friend, do this. It doesn't work that way. You're just making noise that I should support you. When what you are giving me, I have someone that can do better. I don't support nonsense. I'm sincere. He said, I should buy from you. Why? Because I'm your friend. Is that all? What of the value you are going to give me? We will get there. So the girl said, I should buy from her. I said, per month, I use 100 gig. What do you think, or where do you think I'm getting it from before? What can you do better than where I'm getting it? And at the end of the day, when I ask for a price list, the person that is supplying me is even better than what you are bringing. But you are saying, calling yourself my friend, and you want to sell to me at higher price, I won't buy from you. It's as simple as that. You don't set up a business because you have so many friends. No, thinking they will buy. For example, that data business, you are setting it up because you feel like, oh, I have friends that are always online, they should buy from me. You have not really uh, decoded the psychology behind that business. Why are they buying from that place? Why would they buy from me? Is it, you know, your friend can partner you for the first time. They may not stay with you. When they see a better offer, you are in a competitive market. Have it at the back of your mind. You are competing with so many forces. Price is there, um, branding, so many things. And that is why you have to stand out when it comes to marketing. We are talking about psychology of marketing. The first thing you pay attention to is the people you want to sell to. This is what so many people don't define. They don't define their market. For instance, if I am a regime member, and I started in our church, we have, um, let's say, um, roughly we have 500 people in that church. And that is my target. Those guys are the people I want to sell to. The 500 people are the people I want to sell to. My first assignment is to look for what we appeal to them psychologically. And some of those things are wristband of Baba Adeboye. That you put God bless you, hallelujah. It appeals to the technology. Things like fancy Bible, if it, it, it works, things that can appeal to my audience. Or maybe um, anything that I know that these people easily partner. Psychologically, they are spiritual environments. Let's say I'm in a mosque. I want to say to my fellow Muslims, what do I do? I can look for something like maybe a job. That is what we work here. Now, if I have other people selling a job already in that mosque, maybe I go to, um, is it Tesbu now? And if I have other people selling it, and other people selling Quran, I can look for what people are not actually selling, that we are pleased to that environment psychologically. Don't throw away the psychology of your market. The people you want to sell to, that is why you don't buy what you like. You buy what your market likes. For instance, when I was actively into mini importation, I'm still doing mini importation up to this present moment. When I, when I was buying them, there are some things I bought. I don't like them. Personally, I can't vote. My market was demanding for it. And I can't say because I don't like them, I have to um, pull out. Okay, let me, let me bust your bubble. Last year, is it last year? The highest selling product on Jumia was condom. Highest, the product that gave Jumia highest return for the year was condom. Do you think Jumia actually loved selling condom? No, but when people were making demands, Jumia supply. Jumia keeps supplying them when there was demand for that product, the condom. So they have to throw away their whatever belief and everything. And since people are looking for it, now, that should tell you something. People should be your focus. You should be people oriented. What is these people looking for? So when I go through my WhatsApp, I see um, people selling different and the same thing. I keep looking at it. What is their difference? Like many of you that register for this course, for this class, I checked, I deliberately checked your status and I was checking my, I said, well, maybe it works for you, but that is not how to market anything. The marketing was work. Some people do not even put price. <laughs> they put product on status. 
there is no price. I'm sorry to announce to you, I have muted you. I'm sorry. I don't like that. Some people just put products like the display picture. <laughs> I was laughing. I said, no, this is nothing. We will talk about that later on. All these things, we will talk about them. So when Solomon is showing you the practical steps to follow, you won't get lost. I'm just bringing you the background of marketing, the fundamental issues. We need to trash in marketing. It's your ability to convince people. That is what makes you a marketer. The moment you can sell yourself to people, put yourself in the issue, what are they looking for? You don't just, that is when I, when I train people in mini import, I said, don't just go to China and start importing shoe. Is your market looking for shoe? If I'm a student, for example, and I'm a student of Futa, I finished from Futa, this community is very poor. Futa is very poor, it's a poor environment. Let's be with ourselves. We pay our school fee. The highest school fee I paid in Futa was 23,000, and that was 100 level. That was in my time, my, I think my, in my 200 level, my school fee was around 10,000 or something like that. So we don't have money in that place. That is a poor community. I will be very wrong to now say the next thing I will be selling there is a product that goes for 23K per one. I can say to if I if I have some Yahoo guys as a friend, I can say to them, but once I'm done with them, can I scale beyond them? That's the question. So I have to be looking for clothes that will go for two five. But, uh, the highest, maybe 5,000, because I'm selling to a poor community. That is my market. That is so I've trashed the fundamental issue of my market. What is their income size? Someone asked on the group. He said, um, how do you do market research? I'm going to talk about that. This are when you're doing your market research, these are things you look out for. Interest, okay? Price. How, how, how much can you spend on clothes per day, per month? You will be sure that some of those guys, they have five clothes. From 100 level to 500 level, they did not change it. So how do you say to that community? Excuse me? How do you say to them? So you keep looking at it. If you are selling to loud tech students, hey, hey, that place is, sorry to all loud tech guys here, but now knows they are not like Nigeria. Almost everybody there, they use car. Are you getting it? So in that kind of environment, uh -huh, you can be selling iPhones, iPhone gadgets, um, you have, they have the purchasing power. You have trashed one fundamental issue. All of you that are selling on WhatsApp, let me ask you this. Have you been able to analyze your audience purchasing power? I asked a guy, a girl, she was selling here and the year was going for 50K per one. No problem, it's cool. That is awesome. I love it. But every day she keeps complaining that people are not buying. So one day I just spoke close. I said, How many views do you have per post? He said, Maybe 100. What is it? Not, not bad. And I said, Check your audience. Who are they? He now checked those people that were checking his status. He saw that 90% of them are still students or and somebody has just finished NYS and said, Or friends. And the rest are family. And I now ask, ah, Do you think? Any student on your list can afford a week of 50,000, a year of 50,000. He said, ah, he never thought of that. I told her, ah, you have not saw the fundamental issue of your current market. You are advertising a good product to the wrong market. Now, I've, I'm, I've, I've, I've gone ahead of myself. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm beginning to talk about targets. That is, that's supposed to be tomorrow where we talk about how to target your market. That your market will get to the right people not just anyone, the right person. You understand that now? So we have trashed the fundamental of market. People are your market, be people oriented. Let that be at the back of your mind that, oh, my focus is on people. What do they want? All right? Now let's go to logic and emotions. See, many of us, we are logic seller. Like just what the, uh, I sell here, so surprised, blah, blah, blah. No, years back, um, I got a job. Should I got the job? I, I'm supposed to manage an Instagram page for a lady. The lady was in Port Harcourt. So when we met physically, we were talking, and I said, um, I told her what I'm going to do. She said, no, ah, no, no, no. This page, I've been selling before. I know my tactics. What I want you to do, post my products. Once you put the product, put the price, no story. 
I told her, Madam, things have changed. This is not 2005 when nobody was online. You were the, you were the Jagaban of internet then. So many guys are in this industry now. I said to push you out. He said, she said, no, no. Well, I told her, she paid me my money, my fee to market and to hold the page. I was doing what she asked me to do. We we're not making sales. Ah, she came back. Ah, I don't understand though. I told her, you didn't allow me to do what I'm supposed to do. You were not, you are selling logical things to emotional people. He said, uh, what should we do? Okay, fine. This is what I will do. We have to be emotional with our approach. She said, how? I said, okay, fine. One of the first things is we have to do a good storytelling. We have to do some fun on the page, cut jokes. We have to do some one minute videos to engage people. I started giving, I said, ah, all these things are too much now. I will, I that that's the only way to engage people on the internet now. People want to be entertained. Don't forget something. Any day you get, you are selling on the internet. Remember, it is called social media. Social, that social must be there. You must be social. You don't come every day, start selling things to people, they will get bored. There are times you come and joke with them. There are times you come, you bring issues like, ah, I saw, my guys, I saw this on, on, on Twitter. What's your reaction? Let people engage you. Be, be, be emotional with them. That is why there was a day I did a teaching on my status. I said, why do you think Juduke was selling? And this song by, um, this is it, good boy now, Reason With Me. It was an emotional song. Reason With Me talks about an, the life of an average Nigerian. An average Nigerian, yeah, that is what we go through on a daily basis. So when you, when you see something you can relate with, you quickly buy into the song. That song has more than 2 million, is it 2 million views on YouTube? Why? It was an emotional song. He, he sold the song to our emotions. Look at the way um, Cynthia Morgan came on Twitter, gave us some emotional stories. We all bust into the story before Jude came up and they scattered the, scattered the old thing. And all that. You understand? Same thing with you, okay? That's, that song was emotional. People want, to, people want you to appeal to them emotionally. They know you are going to sell to them. Don't let me deceive you. Everyone you meet, they know you are going to sell. Once you come with all your tactics, they know. But they want to see something before they buy. And how you keep appearing emotionally. You don't become logical. In, in part of your emotion is uh, when you give them emotional pricing, if a product, for example, your product is, you, you give them a product of um, 35.5 Naira. For example, you said if you buy three, it's going to go for this, like this kind, all those things. It's still appealing to their emotions. You keep talking to their emotions, not logic. If you want to sell using logic, like let's go to the point. In this century, you are not going to sell. In fact, when you go to the market, you can see those women, right? They use, ah, sorry, apologies to not speaking Yoruba, guys. I'm going to interpret it in, the, in my way. You will see, ah, Oko, Yami, Edebamira, Kini. No, all those things, they are there. They say, ah, Olo, worry me. They don't know you from anywhere. They are just using that thing to get your attention. Ah, Baba, Oko, Omi, Emma, Binu, ah, Edebamira, Kini, Omo, they pray for you and everything. Um, To my uh, other tribe, what I'm saying is when you get to the market, you see all those women who they say, ah, my, my husband brother, my this, my, for example, there's one of my evil brother that I used to buy things from. Whenever I go to the market, we don't know from anywhere. We met the first day and they said, ah, my brother, long time no see, how far? They, you know, the way he talks, we more like family. How this now, ah, you know, carry your babe, come today. He does not know anybody with me. Oh, we're just joking. Ah, uh ah, -uh. my brother, my brother. No, I don't see your face. Don't tell you yeah, now. May I find you something there? Yeah? Let me give him a hook. I, you understand? Trying to relate with me. Do you think I would not leave that guy and go to a guy that found his face? Tell me, I come and buy. No, no. That guy has appealed to my emotions. He has been able to speak to my emotions. And I'm human. I have to relate with him. With, with him. And I keep buying from him every day. Do you understand? So there was a story. Um, when I attended the seminar in Abuja, organized by Central Bank, there was a story I was told in that, bank, um, in that meeting. The guy, uh, the man that came to teach us, when I was talking about marketing, he said there were two, um, two shops in a place in Abuja. 
they were selling the same thing. They were selling um, clothing materials. There's a particular shop that people always buy from that place. People are rushing that lady like mad. The other person, nobody was coming there. So he now resolved to saying that the other person was using juju jams to um, withdraw, um, to take customers. So one of these days, one of the customers had come to him. When they got to his job, after five minutes, you know what the customer said? said no wonder the other person is selling than you. He's selling far better than you. Why? The relationship was not there. His attention was on selling, not on human relationship. If your attention is on selling products in now in this generation and not on relationship, you won't sell for long. You can sell now, but you won't be in this business for long. Your attention must be on relationship. If you see what happened, when all of you, when you message me, I didn't know you before. The first thing I did was to save your contact and make sure you save my relationship has been formed. Tomorrow, I will see your status. You will see mine. We will, we will be friends. We will relate together very well. We will become, we can still do so many things together in the future. The relationship has to be there. Some of you, when, when somebody messaged you, as somebody said, I want to buy, the first thing that comes to your mind is, give me the person price. I don't do that. When someone contacts me and say, ADP, I, I want to maybe, well, I, want to take your, I want to take your course, and I see that I don't have that person number, the first thing that for, I will first tell you is this. What is your name? I like to save your contacts. And once I say, I'll tell you, contact save. Please save mine. We are friends. Okay. Ask that one else. Ah, you are chatting from where, sir? Oh, baby, that is this lockdown. I have to relate. I have to forget the business first. After the relationship has been sealed, we go into business. People like that, they don't go away. They say, you know, oh, this guy cares about me. Even if you, if you do not actually care. But the thing is there, you are related like human being, not like a ghost. Somebody else message you, I want to buy a shoe. The person you don't have con your contact to, the person said ah, the shoe is 25k. No, from relationship, be emotional. Even from interacting with the person, you can get more information that will make you sell to that person. Remove logic where you want to sell. Bring your emotions into it. Say stories, different narratives. I've given people ideas on how to do this. Ideas. Your narrative change things. Okay? Your narrative change things. All right? So let's go to and the next thing I have here, value marketing, lifestyle marketing, ETC. Okay? What is value marketing, first and foremost? Um, if you want to be a good marketer, you must learn how to give things away for free. I could have monetized this class. I tell you, this class should be paid for, but we should to give it for free to have relationship with all of you. I told you, some of you that saw my stores, I paid heavily to organize this class. Yeah, I paid Zoom so that we can have a longer time. We can have, um, uh, what's it called? It can accommodate more people. It was so uh, much for us, but it was whatever pain we are going through. All right. Now, learn how to give things away for free as um, uh, a marketer. I'm going to use some practical example. Okay. Uh, a research was conducted in UK some years back. And that research, um, what they did was they were looking at websites, comparing websites that make sales and those that don't make sales. What is the difference? Now, this is what they observe. Those that make sales, they gave value more than those that don't make sales. Now, let me give you a practical example. If you visit a website, and they are, um, if you visit two websites, and the two websites are selling landed property, maybe they're into real estate. Now, let's, let's take a practical class now. The first one, when you open the site, the first thing you saw is, why should you buy a house in Lekki? And they gave you a good content. Analyzing why you should buy a house in Lekki tells you um, in the next five years, house in this area will go to so, so a lot of money. This, 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 these are the reasons. They gave you reason, and they even go further, telling that we will be there for you in the next five years to help you resell. Okay? That's the website. The second website, we just get here, we just show you a house, 45 million, 
Nothing. All we have is this house is a lucky, buy it, 45 million naira. In be sincere with yourself. Out of this market, um, these two websites, who are you going to buy from? The probability, or let's say the tendency of buying from the other side who gave you value is high. For example, if you go to my website now, www.feedfundng.com, staying on that website alone for 10 minutes, you will have what you need in your forest for good. Um, at least you will cover 40%. Of whatever you will need in trading for us, 40% for free. The same thing, marketing, the same thing, cryptocurrency. We make the content available for free. I opened a YouTube channel not because I don't have job. I started teaching people on investment or marketing for free. Why? I have to make content available for free. You need to learn this. Learn to make content available for free, especially when he has to do. With marketing. If you are selling a product, for example, now you are selling, maybe you are into cake, a pastries, or maybe you are into um, invest management. If you, okay, don't let me rush that, I will talk about it. What should you be doing? It's, on, it's not only about selling. One day you cannot wake up on your WhatsApp and tell people 10 ways to plan on events and manage money. You just give them 10 ways to manage your events and save money for free or tell people um how you can how you can maximize your events with little or telling them color combinations in events these are these are value you are giving out for free you're supposed to pay for it but you are giving it out or um things like um um three steps to make your um uh, uh events successful Someone getting me, okay? Or um, things like um, a type of cakes and a cake that fits social wedding. All those things, they are value. They are things that will be in your page, on your IG, on your Twitter. But um, today, I read a trend on Twitter. The lady, um, uh, an outside lady, a full and lady, did a trend on um, traditional architecture. I stay with that thread and I read it to the end. If assuming I need to do a big project, a big community project I have to do with architectural work, I'm going to call her lady. She spent time to explain how um, we move from British um, architecture to Brazil. I don't, I was so impressed. That is value for free. So what value are you making available? If you are selling, do you know that value makes people connect with you? Are you aware? That is the reason some of us, people, I have, I have, I have a lady, I think she should be in this class, on her phone. She has a folder, and she named the folder ADP. You know what she, what, she, what she normally do? Every day, whenever I finish on my WhatsApp, she will screen grab everything and save it in that folder for future reference. Someone like that will never leave my statement. We never. I have another one that says, there is, if no matter what happened in the day, I have to go to your status. Is that I laugh or I see something valuable? See, guys, learn to make value available. Give people free things. All classes. I have been holding classes like this for years. This is not my first class, or second, or third, or fourth, or fifth. Turn on um, 18. I counted it. I personally organized WhatsApp, more than 100 WhatsApp classes all through the year. We are counting it. And there was no single WhatsApp class that we don't have above 150 students. Teaching on different things, on different topics. We're teaching, teaching. So if we see some of us today here, it's been long. We have been in this business of giving value for free. Why? We know we are going to say something in the future and we need people to be with us. So today, some of the people that are buying my courses or buying my products or buying anything, there are people that attended my free classes then. I don't even remember, they would tell me, ah, do you remember in 2017? When he had a class on WhatsApp, I attended the class. I have been planning to join your mentorship and things like that. Many of them I don't remember again, but we made it available for free then, okay? Makes value available for free. The next thing we go to is lifestyle marketing. Your lifestyle, 
how do you use your lifestyle to market? Okay. Um, I won't spend much time on this. I'll just tell you that um, if you want to be a good marketer, please, I will advise you to follow some guys online. Follow people like Stephen Akintayo on IG. Follow people like Ty Lopez. Follow Gary View. Um, which other guy can you follow now? I think these guys are okay. You can follow Chris Anning, a friend of mine, or Lord Shola Emmanuel. You can follow this guy. Look at the way they live their lifestyle. See, your lifestyle is an impression to your customer. Let's say, for example, someone like me, if you're telling me to come and buy, um, uh, let's say, um, okay, let's say you are training forests, and you tell me, oh yeah, come and buy my forest course, it will take you out of poverty. The first thing I will ask you, or the first thing I will look out for is, are you out of poverty yourself? That is my first target. If I say that you are not out of poverty, there is no reason why I should buy a course from you. You are telling me that this forest will take me out of poverty, and you are saying that poverty. Your lifestyle matter. I'm not saying you should live a fake life. Please, let's draw that line. Don't go and live a fake life. You don't need to wear Gucci. I'm not wearing Gucci. You don't need to start um, doing what you are not supposed to do. Like trying to fake it. You don't need to fake it. Live your original life, but live it in such a way that um, impress others. Your lifestyle with what you are selling. Make sure that you always carry your products. I am my product. I always tell people, when they ask me, what are you selling? I said, I'm selling ADP. I'm the, I'm the one I'm selling. Is this my mother that I'm selling? So I always show myself to people to start. I have, I have what, I know what I know. I have what I have. I am loaded with content. I am ready to deliver any day, anytime, anywhere. Just tell me where the meeting point is. I'm going to deliver. Just come to my... Um, so your lifestyle... For example, now I know some people that are into um, uh, Oriflame products, network marketing, and things like that. There's a lady I love so much. It's a colleague of mine at DGV, uh, Titi. I love the way she, every day, she's always there, living the life of Oriflame. She's giving me an impression that, yes, it's worth it. So if we are selling only for Oriflame products, for example, now, and you are not living the life of Oriflame, all you are selling, I'm not seeing, you told me that. If I use a particular cream, my face will be fresh. And your own face is rough. <laughs> Why should I believe you, my, my sister? I can't. So make sure you carry what you are selling in your lifestyle. Let it show. Let people see that, okay, it's worth it. If you are selling ear, your own ear must be the best. Okay? Your ear must be the best. If you are selling um, a particular cream, that can uh, make people glow. You must not be rough. You must always look look neat and glow. All right? It's very, very, very important. These are essential points you need to pay attention to. Okay. Now let's go to marketing as a journey. All right? Marketing is a journey. It is not something you just achieve one day. Okay? Uh, I've been on internet for long, and I can tell you, selling online is seriously a journey. At times, I call it a lifetime journey. A lifetime journey. You keep building your base every day. You are in a marathon journey. There is no destination here. That's okay. This is my destination. No. You are always moving. So, see marketing, approach marketing like that. That I'm, I'm on a journey. So when you're on a journey, what do you do? You keep improving every day. You keep improving every day. You keep on. I will talk about this later on towards the end of the class. This journey in market. So let's quickly go to um, different social media and their usage. All right, different social media and their usage. Different social media and their usage. Okay. Uh, I would like you to learn from something. Don't make this mistake. Learn, because when Solomon will be taking you tomorrow, I don't want us to have conflict of interest. Like, how do I say this? Uh, you are not um, comprehending what he is saying. 
That's why I took my first, uh, my class today. See, it is not everything you sell on all social uh, media. For example, if you want to, if you want to concentrate on Telegram, make sure you have a good graphic designer. Telegram is home of pictures. Be ready, I mean, absolutely ready to bombard that place with pictures and short videos, which means you have to be ready to produce many pictures. Okay? If you are selling on Facebook, Facebook is house of content. You must know how to write. If you are selling on Twitter, it's a home of trend. You should know how to keep it short and simple. Different platform, if you are selling on LinkedIn, you should know that place is for professionals. So different platform, different approach. You don't bring the metal. That's why I told people, before you connect your Instagram to your Facebook, make sure you understand what you are doing. You don't just bring um, um, the mentality of Instagram to Facebook. Or you bring the mentality of Facebook to Instagram. Or you bring the mentality of Facebook to IG, um, to Twitter. It doesn't work. OK? They have their different approach. And you need to understand that different approach. So one of the approach to this line is um, what I make uh, market penetration. I go to market penetration quickly. I don't want to waste much of our time tonight. Market penetration. How do you penetrate a new market? Maybe you are agreeing on, you are agreeing on in the business and you want to penetrate a market. Okay. Um, I have different ways for you, but I will be talking about a few of them. We have um, the idea of price penetration. When you use price to penetrate the market, in the sense that you look at what is prevailing in the market, the prevailing price, you bring yours down a little bit to penetrate the markets, or if you see that you can't go below the available market price, you penetrate the market by facing um, a niche force. You face a group of people first, make sure you capture them, then you expand. All right? You capture a group of people, first and foremost, then you expand. That is another way to penetrate the market, a new market. Okay, let me give you a practical example. When I want to start my forest course, like I want to start teaching people how to trade forest, that was after years of making money with it. I don't trade with you what I've not, what I don't have um, testimony in. I've made at least millions from it before I start teaching people. The first thing I did is to do a little research. I discovered something. In the forest market, all the teachers that I've met in Nigeria, they don't know how to break the, uh, the course down. Like, they don't know how to teach it in Nigeria language that people will understand. They use all these um, foreign terms, trying to sound technical and all. But then I did my research. I discovered that that is a good way for me to penetrate the market. I did my research, I observed that many of them, they don't know how to penetrate, how to teach in a language that people will understand. So they use big grammars. When we were coming in, we did not use any grammar. We were relating with people in such a way that they were asking me, can forest be this simple? Because we spend time to do our research and we make sure that we bring it to them in the simplest form ever. And that gives us an edge in the market. Within two months of opening our Forest Academy, we have students that were rushing in because now what looks complicated is made simple to them. You understand now? That is it. You make the research, you look at the way you enter the market, and one of it is um, one of the penetration is what I just talked about. It can be through price. It can be through research to look at the loophole, to look at the loop, um, what is missing, the missing link in that industry, okay? The missing link 
one of so th that's also lead me to starting a new business. For example, now it is a, a, an added advantage for you. When you want to start a new business, the first thing I always tell people is this. When they tell me they identify a business, I ask you, what are you going to solve? Now, let me come back to many of you that are into mini importation or importation. Before you, I want to ask a question to be sincere with you. When you go to buy bags, what do you have in mind? Is there any particular gap you are going to, a, a, a link you want to stand in? Now, let's say for, for instance, if I notice that I have a village where nobody is selling to them, I have identified something. This is marketing. That village, nobody is supplying them bags. And they are using bags, or they have sellers there. And I can get it cheaper. I have identified a link, a missing link. That is what I will penetrate. I will penetrate that link, that missing link. I get in into that village, supplying them bags. But why should I come and supply a community that is already saturated with bags? You get what I'm saying? So I don't need to, I need to do my research, I need to make my research to know um, what, I'm, or what I'm coming into. So when we talk about research, um, let me solve this. Somebody asked on the group said, how do you make market research? It's very simple. You can create a simple Google form. A Google form, when you create a Google form, it's very simple, just go to Google, type Google form, you will create one, send it to your friends, to people around you, people you want to send to, beg them to help you fill the form. Maybe you were able to send out 200 forms, and may, later on maybe they, re, they return, um, let's say, 100 to you. That 100, analyze it, see what they are saying. That is, your, that is how you penetrate the market. If, for example, um, you ask them, uh, sweat bets or waist trainer, which one, which one is better? And maybe 90% of your audience, they, they pick sweat bets. That gives you an idea that sweat bets should be what you go for. Also, you can do it on Facebook. You can just write on Facebook um, some simple questions and tell them to answer those questions. Just tell your friends to answer the questions on your page. Like, um, guy, please, I need your opinion on so, 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 and so. What do you see? What do you have to say about them? What you are doing there is market research. You are researching the market. You are looking at okay, what will go in this market? What will work in this market? What will work? That is market research for you. And are you getting it now? These are the same idea now you are going to take into your Facebook ads. When you want to sell on Facebook, all these things I've said will be at the back of your mind. When you want to create your, um, your what is it called? Your contents on Facebook, you must be emotional with the contents. You, have, you must have a right target. The right people must be targeted. Depending on what you are selling, that means you know your customers, who you are selling to. So, we target the right people. There must be value in what you are giving out. No, some of you know, you, you will realize what is missing. When you say, my ads do not convert, you can see what is missing there. A lifestyle must appear there. Also, um, then you put the ads on the right platform using the right language. So, um, tomorrow, Solomon will be telling you about captions, how to use captions to get attention people, how to compose your content, how to do a sponsor ad properly. I'm just speaking generally on marketing this evening. I'm teaching you on marketing on the soul so that you will have a new mindset towards this thing. Like, okay, I think I am getting this wrong. This is how I'm supposed to approach these guys. This is, you have a new approach after the class. I believe someone is getting me a new approach after the class. There should be a new approach now. Marketing is not um, a logic thing, it's emotional stuff. So we talk about the fundamental of it, the fundamental issues, the underlying issues, is ability for you to identify. 
ability for you, ability to know what you are actually selling or who are you selling them to. That is the first issue you, you identify in the market. When someone tells me, ah, this thing is not selling, people are not buying, I tell, I tell the person, I have never, I have never, I'm saying it again, I have never you know, import any product or any service and it's not selling. It will sell. Because before I import anything, I spend, I can spend, a, for the past um, two months now, myself and my team, we wanted to buy, a, we have been on a product. It was Wash My Play that showed me the product and he said, he has been making research on it and people will buy. I have been doing my own research on that list. We have not imported the product. And I'm still going to conduct a proper research to see the reactions of, and our target is ladies. Now, before we bring it to them, I started asking ladies around me, what do you think about this? If you see this, will you have it? No, 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 wow. If I can see that, I will appreciate it all. It will make sense. What am I doing? I'm spending my time to investigate. So by the time I have like 100 people that are saying the same thing like, ah, if I should see this thing, I'm going for it. I will bring in 50 of that product. I won't bring 100 because 100 people are actually interested. I know Nigerians. I will bring 50 to test the market. If that 50 should work well, I bring more. They become what? But that is what many people don't do. They, you don't pay attention to those things. Our own is just like, ah, um, my friends, um, there was a training in mini importation. Um, people are now selling. You go and start buying shoes. I started disrupting your friends. Come and buy from me. Support your friend. No, no. <laughs> you know, uh, support your friend to rise. People are supporting you. You should know that they have their own issues as well. If you are my friend and you are selling a shoe of 23,000 and you want me to buy, at least before I buy a shoe of 23,000, that means you know my mindset. You know what I'm looking for. You can't just force your shoe on me. It's not possible. You can't say, I should dash you my I bought shoe of 30K before. When I see the shoe, the person showed me, the, I, I can import shoe myself, but I just love that shoe. I saw it, 30K. I bought it. And I'm okay with what I bought. So you don't force your product on people because they are your friend or your family. And when they keep buying from you, you have to reason beyond that. Expand. And in way of expanding is what we are talking about here tonight. So before I proceed in my class, I will, um, um, all right, we've talked about um, fundamental of marketing, logic and emotions, value marketing, lifestyle marketing. We talked about marketing as a journey. Um, we talked about social media and their usage. We are going to expand that maybe tomorrow, talking about each social media. Then we talk about marketing plan and, plan and penetration. You know, how you plan your marketing style? How do you get into this market? How do I plan my way of entry? And how do I get my market share? Okay, how do I get my market share? When I see the people that I want to um, sell to, how do I convince them? What is the plan that should be on ground for me to do that? Okay, and I said I will be talking more on marketing as a journey. So I will combine it with penetrating um, a new market. There we can run. Is it Randolph or Randolph? English is difficult. Anyone who shall end the class. We shall end the class after that. Okay, let me um, expand When I talk about marketing as a journey, see, before you begin any business, plan your marketing very well. You know, I said this, I said, the only place money is coming in is through marketing. So you need to plan very well. Okay, let me use Esther as an example now. Esther said she, um, she is into um, producing coconut oil good business. There are questions Esther needs to answer. Number one, who are my audience? Who am I selling to? It is not everyone that you meet that is actually your audience. You have your own audience. You have your own niche. You have your own market. Who am I selling to? Number one. Number two, how do they want it? You know, in economics, what to produce, uh, how to produce, where to produce, the want to produce, all those things are very important. How do they want it? In what form? 
Do they want it? How do they want it to be supplied? You pay at it. That is your journey as a marketer. If you are going to business, you must understand this thing. Do they want it to be well packaged? Or just want it to... They, 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 your customers are dynamic. They want it in different ways. You must know. You must know. And for example, now, let me tell you something. I'm a difficult person to sell to. For number one thing, let's say, for example, if I am going to buy from you, for example, if you want to sell a check to me, a check, if the check is below 4,000 naira, I won't buy. Why? I believe it's, a, it's fake. It's my orientation. Yeah, I'm sorry, you might not like me. Like, what's wrong with this guy? Yes. If the, if, for example, if you want to sell a shoe to me now, and the, when I ask you the price, and you say the shoe is 12,000, I'm, I'm not going to buy it. It's fake to me. You understand? Whereas, to some audience, it is not. So you have to understand who I'm selling to. When I was selling shoe, I sold, to a, I sold a shoe, I bought a shoe for uh, 12,500 Naira from China. I sold the shoe for 45,000 Naira in Nigeria. Because the person I want to go and sell it to, I know that brother very well, I know that man. If I should tell the man the shoe is below 25, he's not going to buy. I know him, he won't buy. He tell me, eh, 20K, eh, like that. <laughs> what I said, but the shoe is okay. It's well, it's, the shoe is, he's still using it today too. I told him this shoe, a uh, boy is 50K. He was not begging me. It did 45 now, don't do this. I said, no, no, if you cannot pay 50K, go away. He was begging me. I said, I have an answer for 45. When I calculate everything, we transfer and everything, I take everything around, let's say, is it 15,000 Naira? And I sold it for 45,000 Naira. Look at their profit margin. I understand my audience. They are king. Know their purchasing power. Know who they are. Know what they want. And know how they want, how they, and how they want it. Okay? It's very, very important. It's very important. Do they want it expensive? There are some guys, I know them. If I want to say to them, if it's not expensive, they're not going to buy. And there are some people I know. If it's too expensive, they will run away. And this is your journey. I have to differentiate. What do I give to them? That is, you know, I have, I do something like this. Do you know why Coke have their Coke in different sizes? It is market research that brought that idea. Do you think they have time for all this nonsense? They gave you Biggie, they gave you small Coke, Coke Zero. It is market research. When they finish the market, some people say that we want to drink Coke, but we don't like the sugar. Maybe they have diabetes. Oh, Coke, coke now is okay. You want to drink, but we don't like sugar. Let's give you Coke Zero. Some people say, that I, wish, I wish to drink Coke, but the 30 CL is too much for me. Go bring something that is smaller. You will drink this one. I thought that I wish I drink Coke, but the plastic, they bring the one in can. They must, that is the, that is the idea of market. That's why I said, you spend quality time to analyze the market. Now, can you see that market is not just something we just do? It's something you sit down and plan and begin to ask questions. You see, the same thing, uh, um, your pick, pick me. Some people want it in, before they go and produce the powder form. It was market return that brought out idea. Okay, let's do it in powder form. Let's make it, let's have the big one. Let's have the one sachet. Let's have the one, the liquid one inside thing. Let's have this one inside Lido. Because they want to cover the whole market. If you cannot buy the one, that, that is the job. You keep asking, can they afford this? Can they do this? All these things happen in market research. And why am I laying emphasis on this? The major reason why so many ads don't convert is because of targeting the wrong audience. Yes. I, I, I was reviewing a, was a, a lady ad, they did the, the ad on Instagram, he was selling sweat beds. And I said, give me the ad, let me see, I reviewed the ad. The first thing I got was a target. <laughs> you are selling sweat beds. Your target is men and women, who do what? If I want to sell sweat beds, I'll be looking at people that, are, my target will be going to gym, sports. These are the people, the guys that I need my products. People that go to gym. People that do sports, people that are obese, fat, people that are, all those things I'll be looking for them as my target. These are my audience. You know what I'm saying? Anybody. And I will be looking for age, age group. 
people from age so 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 i don't people from age 18 downwards they don't need what are they what are they what should happen what happened to your stomach and you, all those things if i'm selling a product that have to do with um babies i'm looking for nursing mother online thank god for internet they can help me target them so my heart will go to them it will keep showing on their platform that you need to buy these products so that is why the market research must be um must be rich before you go into this business you go before you bring in anything to sell or before you produce anything at all make market research will people buy it in this way or they buy it in another way okay that is the journey and that is a good way to penetrate when you there's nothing as as um as um sweet as you bring in the product the people demanded for it's so it's so it's so sweet they demanded for it you bring the product you sell it you are done with the deal that is it all right that is how it works okay that is how it should be done and that is the journey of marketing and don't forget i'm going back to this please i'm going to advise you all of them are selling on whatsapp stop this attitude of putting anything online without price and details if you put up a shoe say it um uh what is the okay uh, uh, should i use nike now or i use adidas it's adidas so 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 and uh, fluffy uh, comfortable unisex size so, so 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 available price this don't be afraid seriously i'm not joking i've started i meet some people on my status they're my friends i told them i've warned them good price good details they don't listen let me know what i'm going to see if i want to buy i will come in and buy from you if i'm not buying i will not buy and when i said they're not listening to me i mute them you are, not, you are just consuming yourself on my whatsapp stores don't let anybody mute you if you're not putting details and price do you go to shop price and see a product then you now go to the um manager manager please i saw this product what is the price they put the price there if you cannot afford it you go away it even it helps you it saves you from stress the original that need the product will come to your inbox they will send you a message you are the once if someone saw the price and they send you a message that has saved you a lot of stress already understand please put price on whatever you are selling on any platform where you are selling them okay put price let us know what you are selling and let them be details all right so um someone is dressing up so um as i was saying trying to put all these things in place so that your marketing can be unique and top notch now what have I, i've not talked about so many things I've not talked about how to carve a niche for yourself. I've not talked about branding. I've not talked about uh, um, how to uh, uh, customer uh, orientation. We have a little to talk about in marketing. Hopefully tomorrow I will do that before the next person comes in or after he finish, I can take it up and quickly talk about some things as well. You know, I have to tell you about the importance of your logo, your business logo. I saw some one logo this uh, yesterday on my side. I was just laughing. I couldn't decode the information on that logo. It puts uh, like a big alarm and last stop. The name was even too long. That's not that is poor branding. A big alarm and last stop. Blah blah blah. Under it, he started writing. Uh, we do this. He said, "This is logo. We do that. We do that." Phone if like three phone numbers. I said. This is not, and some flyers, when I see some flyers, we don't even know the program again. When you see this flyer, the first thing that comes to your mind, customer appreciation. Simple and short, is branding. Many people are so poor in this thing, and also completion of colors. Our company color is green, red, and white. We don't conflict it. I don't use brown today, tomorrow I use red. If you go to my IG page, our IG page, Fitcon, uh, you will see the same color red white green red white green red white green that's our color you when you are brand, when you when you want to brand your company 
you choose a particular color and stay with it. Today, use black for your logo. Tomorrow, we are seeing black. It, it doesn't appeal. As some people, um, when they appear, when I see them on IG, when I see pictures, you don't know, pictures send us, the pictures send some messages to us. Picture is a form of, uh, of communication. When you send pictures, when we see it, sometimes pictures turn people off. When they say, what is this? I saw people, they will, they will um, go and use, uh, what's it called? When the photo college or photo editor, they will bring shoe together with bra, together with um, a chat, together, they will put everything together, they will put their logo, they will now upload it, and they want me to come and, what are, we, what are you selling there? That is, that is poor branding. Your branding should be top notch. When people see that, when you see some pictures, you don't want to go away. You stay like, ah, what are they talking about? When you saw me, you say, oh, this is nonsense. You have to know these things. And I've not talked about it. You have to talk about it. The choice of color, your choice of logo, your name. When you listen to our name, Fightcom, Adidas, Nike, Tommy Finger. You know, it can use DigiView, Amazon, Facebook, not Ogunshakia. <laughs> I like my jazz also <laughs> It's too long. People will not remember you. They won't remember you. It's too long. The name is too long. When I say some name, some business name, I like, ah, what is this now? Can't you coin something that can easily, we can, and your logo, your name should not be even more than three syllables. Amazon, three. Nike, Benz, Toyota, Digiview. Fight con. Now, you get it now. Something simple. We can easily remember. Something we can easily remember. Not some big name that we go to Oluwa Shaki and the convention. What is that? How many people remember that name? Your name should be simple that people will easily pick it when they say, I I've seen this name before. Fight con is simple. Two syllables. You can easily. Relate. I, I attended a training. That guy, that fake kind guy. Yeah, it's good. You can easily remember. Understand? So your name should be simple. Make it simple. It's part of branding. The name on the product, people can easily remember. Coke, Panta, Munch, Conga, Jumia. Some of these things doesn't have meaning. What is the name of Jumia? You don't know. What is the name of Conga? You don't even know. You just look for a name that can easily, people can Google. People can easily remember the name. That's all. Don't be asking us now to fight con. Don't disturb yourself. Just call the, our company, fight con. You are okay. All right? So that is it for now. Thank you.